You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something to be on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Polar Night. So, I've been hit with a few uh, copyright claims for the uh, music in the in this series, so I'm going to be turning the volume way down. Uh, yeah, so... Um, <laughs> I would like to be keeping all my revenue rather than sharing it, so, uh, yeah. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of turn the music a bit down. Y'all should still be able to hear it a little bit, but anyway, I'll let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you were up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> so the sergeant made me get down and give him 50, and as I got to 33, he made a ripping noise. He made a ripping noise and mimed, and mimed the splitting of something with his hands. I found myself mooning the entire squad. Dana and June burst into giggles while Aaron face palmed. Let me guess, have it, he gave you even more push ups? A hundred, plus a lap around the base of my ass showing. Admit the mental image was both funny and kind of appealing. I joined in the chuckling as June sidled, sidled along the bar toward me. Get you anything? She motioned to the bar, stalked to the gills with a variety of spirits. My stomach tightened and my smile faded a little. Ah, no, thank you, I, I don't drink. Seriously? What kind of man are you? I bristled, not appreciating her implication. A man who doesn't drink. I shot to her glare and she noticed I wasn't laughing, nor for that matter were the others. Christ, it was a joke, lighten up. Uh, hey, anyone else want something? I can whip up a real good pina colada. Oh, me please. Yeah, I'll take a... Ah, that's right, southerner voice. <laughs> ah, mm. ah, I'll take a pint of that Norwegian, be that Norwegian beer. Uh, One Lurvy, coming right up. Much obliged. I'll have another pint, too. Alrighty. Um, uh, hey, Garrett. What was that commotion with those two about? He pointed to the table where they'd been sitting moments before. Sounded pretty intense. Gail doesn't seem the type to get pissed like that. Admittedly, the argument had still left me a little shaken. They have, uh, disagreements about whether the crew is still alive. We gathered that- we gathered that much. But I don't know what to say. don't even know how much I should say. It's really up to them to explain it if they want. They kind of looked really upset. Uh, it... <clears throat> they kind of looked really upset. It might be a good idea to check on them. Leave them alone. Like Garrett said, if they want to explain, that's up to them. Besides, they're sisters. They'll figure it out on their own. I don't know. I hate it when ladies fight. Much rather hear them laugh than shout, you know. Oh, Rufus, you're such a sweetheart. You think women shouldn't fight or argue? No, I just hate it when they do. It feels wrong. Kind of... Kind of chauvinistic, don't you think? I guess I'm kind of a little... Uh, kind of like a knight in that regard. You're thinking of chivalry. Aaron, June, Dana, and I exchanged baffled looks, but ended up smiling anyway. It was sort of a sweet sentiment, I think. So, Dana, Captain McGregor was your dad. In response, she necked her beer, audibly gulping before thumping the glass down and sighing, even Rufus, already having emptied his first glass, gave her a funny look. Emphasis on was. Why? Well, uh, I was just curious about him. The inquiry said some stuff about how he'd had problems with... Wasn't Carrie the navigator? Oh boy. A tense look shot between me and Rufus. June's, June's smile faded again and she poured a pint, seemingly bracing herself for another argument. Yes? In other words, the one who was supposed to keep the errand, you know, not lost... Despite not being in physical contact, I could feel his body tense. A soft tapping against his bar stool hit my ears, his paws rapidly bouncing off it. It's an instinctual thing for lapines, rapidly thumping the ground with a paw in response to stress and occasionally fear. But judging by the sound of the grinding teeth, this was less stress and more fury. He turned, facing her fairly with a murderous look in his eyes. The fuck are you suggesting? Oh fuck no, we're not having this bullshit, calm down. Oh fuck no, we're not having this bullshit, calm down. What do you think I'm suggesting? I heard she had an eye for someone on board. You saw those pos position reports. Maybe Carrie was distracted. You... Say that again! Hey guys, enough! Though his rich, deep voice lent way to his command, it was June who took us all by surprise. That is more than enough! Both of you! Even Dana... Even Dana seemed taken aback. For such a sweet-hearted girl, June barked like a drill instructor. Fury etched on her face. Second y'all. It is time for Walter. Mm-hmm. There we go. 
All right. If you're going to be at each other's throats, you can leave the ship right now. Do I make myself clear? There was silence in the room. Even Aaron, even Aaron's foot had stopped, had stopped thumping. Perfectly. Fine. June's expression remained stern, but she placed the beer in front of Dana. Before she had the chance to place Aaron in Rufus's drink, Dana gulped from, the new, from her new pint, draining half in a single go. A glance at Rufus meeting his eyes. Clearly, his buzz had very much been killed. I gulped silently from, from his fresh pint. Aaron accepted his cocktail from June, but he simply poked that enthusiasm gone. With the mood very much ruined, I had no reason to sit here anymore. I excused myself. Go to speak with. Go for a smoke. My nerves were jittery enough when I saw the clock above the uh, above the bar. 12.18 a.m. It was just over ten minutes before the ship departed. If I was going to back out of this, now was the time to decide. Trying to conceal my shaking hands, I fished my pack of smokes out of my pocket and glanced within. A single white filter stared back. My last smoke. If you didn't count the stash I'd left in the room, that is. I felt a jolt of mild panic. I'd have enough to last me the, last me the fortnight and change the, change the, the fortnight and change this trip was likely to take. If you're looking for more cigarettes, we sell them here at the, com at the commissary. June had obviously spotted me examining my pack. She gave me a little smile, eyes twinkling. Ordinarily, I'd be relieved to know where to get smoke, but getting more to get more smokes, but my perfect excuse was now gone. I returned to a, I returned a strained grin and stalked off to the door of the deck. The bracing chill, <sighs> the bracing chill wind hit particularly hard after exiting the warm, cozy lounge. My nose would absolutely dry out in this weather. I wasn't looking forward to that. I remember Mum and how I told her I would let her know my progress. Pulling my phone out, I typed. On board the Sylvia. I'm okay. Love you. Talk to you tomorrow. I guess I could call, but I really wasn't in the mood for a conversation right now. At least she knew I was here, safe and sound. I moved further up the deck towards the bow. I slid the cigarette out of the box and took it between my lips. I brought my lighter up. Shink. Mother of a... Shink, 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 shink. Oh my god. Why of all times did it suddenly decide now that now was the perfect time to stop working? A cock dealer. Um, cock dealer. Sounds of heavy hoof boots for hoof boots. Hoof boots announced Joseph's arrival. I offered a small wave before going back to trying to light my smoke. He watched me with those piercing eyes as I awkwardly tried to light up. And then, just like that, it flickered to life. I drew in my smoke and felt its warmth fill me up. I couldn't remember even ever having issues lighting up. I hoped it wasn't an omen. With a heavy sigh, I blew a thick cloud of smoke from my muzzle and closed my eyes, allowing my muscles to loosen. The wailing of my addiction indulged once again, quietened. Need a light? He stepped closer, leaning on the Oh god, sorry y'all. He stepped closer, leaning on the railing and gazing out at the port, twinkling at the long at the long 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 Yerbian the long Yerbian lights. No thank you. We stood there in silence for a while. I joined him in staring out towards the town. It was so calm and quiet, inviting. I should still have should still have time if I ran to grab my pack. My mind bounced back and forth as I anxiously debated. You want to leave? Glancing at him, I noticed he was watching me intently. It wasn't a question, but a statement of fact. I took another draw and, and, and turned, leaning my hips against the railing. Am I that obvious? Like open book. His English was a little awkward, and his accent was pretty thick. Despite his size, his eyes, his eyes held warmth, perhaps concern. With a heavy sigh, I blew a thick cloud of smoke from my muzzle. Why the fuck am I here? My rhetorical question echoed around the deck as I made a gesture with my hand, indicating the Sylvia. Oh, uh, one second, y'all. Water time. Oh, sorry about that, y'all. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know my mic wasn't on. Anyway, this is pointless. We're not going to find them. But you came anyway. My mom wants me here. As far as I'm concerned, my brother can go f The bile rose up in my throat as I caught myself just before I could launch into a rant. Seriously, why was I saying this to a guy I'd met an hour ago and barely said two words to? The bull seemed unmoved, watching me evenly with a sidelong glance before slowly turning to look back towards the lights of the town. We were quiet once more, but this time I got the impression he was deep in thought, considering what to say. The billowing mess from his nostrils suggested deep, slow, and even breaths compared to my own shallow and slightly elevated breaths. Thinking about Connor had got me worked up again. I could feel my tail curling upward slightly in agitation. You should leave. That surprised me. He spoke with certainty, glancing sidelong at me once more. You sound pretty sure. The ship. He slowly nodded his huge back, his huge head back toward the ship. Not good. Not good? Duh. 
He returned my baffled look with a blank expression, his eyes never leaving mine. Meaning what exactly? He looked away, his gaze focusing on something in the distance. A few awkward moments passed without an answer. Well, you going to answer? For a few moments more, he was silent before slowly pushing himself back upright and turning to face me, towering over me. Just know, the trip is dangerous. I can't say more. I was about to demand a better explanation, but the sounds of boots drew my, drew my gaze towards the ship's main deck. There you are. June was quick walking towards us, waving, bri waving brightly. You wave brightly. <laughs> Glad I found you, Garrett. The ship will be departing shortly. I wanted to check if you're still okay. God damn, was it that obvious to everyone? I gave Joseph a long, hard glare, debating whether to challenge him again on his cryptic warning. But the giant just stared back, completely nonplussed. Yeah, just... I took another draw, looking wistfully back at the town. Having second thoughts about this trip? I just... Don't know why I need to be here. If you find something, I'll know about it eventually when you return. I'm basically just a glorified tourist. Don't you want to be there if we do find something, though? I don't want to pry, but if you really want to leave, I'll ask the captain to wait till you've just dis disembarked. Really? Of course. Sheriff likes to play the boss, but you but you all put money into this just as just as he did. If the trip is delayed a few minutes, no one will care. They both watched me intently. June with a look, of, a look of kindly concern. Joseph, a more analytical look. It's difficult to discern his facial expressions. Casting a look back toward the town, its lights beckoning to me. Memories of Mom came floating back to me. Images of the misery and inconsolable grief she'd endured. Of the almost manic delight she'd shown when that fucking letter first arrived. A couple weeks on a glorified tourist ship. That's what it took. I took a, fi I took a final draw on my cigarette before stubbing it out into the metal, into metal bulwark. It came all this way. Might as well see it through, right? That's the spirit! Joseph watched me with a curious look before simply nodding and looking back out towards the town. Let's say we go inside. Dinner's all, dinner is ready. Don't want to miss out. Actually, I think I'll skip it. Pretty tired and I had a long flight, but thanks. Fair enough. Good night and sweet dreams. She's so sweet. I love June. She's adorable. We walked together back into the lounge before parting ways at the doors leading to the cabins. The entire time, gnawing at the back of my mind, was a voice screaming that I should grab my bag and dash for the gangway. My stomach felt like it was going to empty itself all over the floor the entire way. The sense of building dread as my, wind as, my as my window of escape closed filled my thoughts the entire way back to my cabin. As soon as the door was closed, I locked it behind me and leaned my head against the cold wood. Losing my opportunity to leave was weighing heavily. Now I was in, now I was in this for the long haul. Resentment bubbled inside me. I was taking, was taking potentially weeks out of my life to be a tourist on a search the combined on a search the combined efforts of many ship, aircraft, and rescue organizations failed to turn up anything on. Second y'all, it is water time. It is the time for water. There we go. All for Connor. No, Mom asked me to do this. Knowing for sure it was all it was all important to her. I turned, quickly stripping off my winter clothing. The interior of the ship was just slightly chilly once I once I was naked, which is how I liked it. It's a lot easier to sleep when it's slightly slightly too cold. When you can wrap yourself up in the covers, that's when it's too hot. Matted fur is not fun, and when you already smell of tobacco, I sniffed my arm. My sense of smell was not what it once was, but I still reeked of the stuff. I kept remembering myself. I kept remember, reminding myself of the many reasons to quit smoking, but when the nerves said it was like being an autopilot, I decided to grab a quick shower. I was pretty pungent. Even ignoring the smoke, wearing thick winter clothes does not does work up a sweat. Grabbing my toiletries bag from my pack, I padded into the small bathroom. Once again, grateful to have the cabin to myself. I didn't have to worry about someone barging in. The bathroom was tiny, just barely enough to fit the toilet, shower, and sink. Kind of a sharp contrast to the bedroom. Space was a premium on board a ship, I guess, and I would imagine the tourists typically renting this ship would be spending most of the time taking most of the time taking in the Arctic. As soon as I flicked on the light, I saw a tall, skinny wolf staring at me in the mirror, or at least one eye was. I looked like a freak. On many, among many reasons, I avoided relationships. The scars on my right wrist were something I always kept covered. Even though they were on the sides of my wrist rather than on the underside, I always worried people would confuse it with self-harm. It was a conversation I could absolutely do without. The fact they were bite scars would only lead to more questions and... Ugh. I was reminded of a particularly insufferable workmate at my last job who would not stop asking about my eye. Part of the reason I grew out my hair to cover it, even if it technically it was against safety regs. The scar running down my face over my left eye aligned almost perfectly with the middle. Livid, furless skin scarred from, scarred from the claw that robbed me of the vision in that eye. And further down my muzzle, another scar unlike, unlike, unlike on my eye. This one was always in my field of view. A constant reminder. Fuck! 
A familiar stinging, stinging began, my, began in my ruined eye. I fumbled for my back. Tears poured uncontrollably from my eye, and my face crunched up in response to the pain. My hand pulled out and tossed the stuff, in, stuff within a side or onto the floor. As I scrambled for my proxy, my hand touched a small bottle as I brought it out. So the white-colored eye drops bottle came into focus. With practiced ease, I tilted back my head, forced to open my eye with one hand, and squeezed several drops onto the scarred surface of my left eye. After a few moments, the drops took effect, and a cooling, soothing sensation washed away the pain. The trigger for the pain was still a mystery. Doctors suggested anxiety, whether even my smoking. But I knew the ultimate cause. Jesus. Son of a bitch. I threw the vial in my, ba in my bag. For the, proxy for the proxy medicaine, I typically only needed it once every couple of weeks. I'd already needed to use it twice in a single day. I had a bunch of bottles to tide me over, but I felt a renewed pang of anxiety as I realized I would need to be careful. Two weeks in this weather might drain my supplies quick. The pain, with the pain gone, I was once again able to stare at the wreck, gazely, gazing glumly back at me. Catching the scent of tobacco and sweat, I pulled a face. I couldn't pull it off any longer. I scooped up the bottle of shampoo from where I tossed it aside, hunting for my eye drops. The shower was kind of cramped, but at least everything looked pretty well maintained. As the hot water poured over me, I felt the filth of a long, sweaty, sweaty, strip, sweaty trip and many smoke breaks slough, slough off me. My eyes closed in bliss. I worked the shampoo into my fur and built the lather. Moving my hands through my fur, I worked the soap into my body and my hair. The soothing warmth loosened my taut muscles. I felt an ache near the base of my spine as my tail, which had been curled in an agitation for God only knows how long at this point, finally sagged, relaxing as my body let go of the tension that it that had me so tightly wound up. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye